Young to Live By's first merch range is now available with 260 products to choose from, courtesy of Gareth Richards. Whether that be a biopsychosocial night t-shirt, a Freud Ardler Young phone case, your MBTI type, or for you guys in the Discord server, kindest regards adorning a mug, there's something for everyone. Check out youngtoliveby.shop and bring just a little bit more depth psychology to your daily life. Hi everyone, I used to go by the alias of Jimmy Boyo, as many of you guys know, and as such used to be intimately involved with the so-called Boyo phenomenon. Boyos are typically young guys who are immensely frustrated with the current culture, and as such are interested in the work of C.G. Jung, Friedrich Nietzsche, Christianity or so-called neo-paganism, psychedelics, and general self-development as it's currently represented by online memes such as waking up early, cold showers and breathing techniques, as a compensation to try and reclaim their own sense of identity and masculinity. Boyos usually come to be boyos, however, once they experience a catabasis of significant magnitude, usually depression, addiction, in particular to porn, or a general feeling that their lives have just simply lost meaning. However, despite talking to hundreds upon hundreds of boyos, I have never met one who has pulled themselves out of their slump permanently purely by engaging with their current set of so-called tools. Anyone can test this for themselves, if they are truly honest with themselves. If I am to be 100% honest too, then at best, it creates a fantasy away from real world engagement with instinct and relating, and at worst, inflation resulting in an acute episode of psychosis. What then is the solution that the boyo is often so diligently looking for and suffering so hard to find? This is where the very real actuality of the Jungian shadow comes into play. The shadow is often discussed online as that part of the unconscious which contains all of the evil capacities which the individual has repressed for the purposes of social cohesion and its famed integration is being able to tap into the rage, anger, and repressed masculinity which lurks within it, in a controlled manner, of course. One can understand why this idea has popularity, with not only Jung's writings hinting at such things when removed from their wider context, but with the recent explosion of internet gurus and pop psychologists, it is almost impossible to find a source which accurately describes what the shadow really is, derived from frontline clinical experience rather than sound bites and philosophy. Boyos are not guilty of this. They have been led astray yet again, only this time not by the wider culture, but by the places that they turn to find a much needed respite. The shadow, despite being misrepresented, is paradoxically the solution to the maladaptations and frustrations that the boyo has. However, one must first understand what the shadow really is, and for this we have a popular two hour long video on this channel and an accompanying free PDF which breaks this down in as much practical detail as one would need. An understanding of the anima too will also be a great guide for you, on which we have many videos in our Anima Animus playlist. If you are to start somewhere, however, start with the clickable link on screen and in the description as the best introduction that we currently have on this channel. The most important thing to understand when dealing with the shadow is that the anima, being the relating function, forms first. You cannot have a shadow without first having an ego position, which by necessity is formed through relating. Thus, the shadow is the shadow cast by how you relate. The moral complex, or Freudian superego, is co-created along with the shadow as a result of relating to create the EAM triad. 
the free flow and exchange of information between the ego, the alter ego, that is the nuclear complex of the shadow, and the moral complex. We will post another video on this channel going into the EAM triad in more detail. On screen is a diagram created by Steve Richards, my professional mentor and depth psychologist with over 40 years of clinical experience, who, together with his wife, Pauline, were personal family friends of Franz Jung, Carl Jung's only son. This video, this channel as a whole, and Discover Your Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook, the guide which this diagram is taken from, which you can purchase from the link in the description, form part of the promise which Steve and Pauline made to Franz Jung in his father's home in May of 1992. That is, to bring his father's work, Carl Jung's work, into the reach of ordinary people. Regular viewers of the Jung to Live By channel will also be aware of their work in the film industry. Through Pacific Road Studios, with its links to a voluminous amount of top-tier Hollywood talent and international partners, they are actively working on 23 Jungian films, now in pre-production, including Lilith, The Last Temptation of Adam, and Victrix, The Valiant of Albion. Steve and Pauline have helped me enormously with my own maladaptations, which one can track across the channel, both in what I update you guys with, and passively, even down to how I seem to have caught up to looking 24 years old. My relatively rapid so-called transformation, though I must stress being far from complete, is often brought up in online consultation with you guys, and thus I feel it appropriate to mention here. I credit my improvements to Steve and Pauline and their clinical model, distilled from 40 years of frontline clinical experience. Without their kind assistance, I would be a very different person today, and not in a good way, to say the least. To return to the diagram then, you can see that Freud, in the top left corner, is represented by the Greek letter Beta, Adler by Sigma, and Jung by Psi. This is to show that an individual is simultaneously biological, psychological, and social, with a free flow of energy and information between these three layers. Really, we should describe it as a biosocial psycho model, but for ease, we refer to it as biopsychosocial, with the lifespan of an individual, broadly, being broken down into three overlapping stages Freudian, Adlerian, and Jungian. Broadly, the first stage, Freudian, refers to the early part of life, which primarily involves adaptation in the context of one's family. Following this, the Adlerian stage refers to wider social interest, and finally, the Jungian stage refers to a wider sense of transcendence and self-confirmation through meaning. Every Jungian stage maladaptation has its origins in the Adlerian stage, which in turn has its origins in the Freudian stage. Thus, when looking at the broader personal myth of a boyo, the catabasis they faced, which initially generated their interest in the works of Jung, Nietzsche, and internet gurus, is not actually a Jungian stage problem, and as such, Jung's works won't really be of much use in addressing them. Jung himself said one should ensure that they read and understand Freud and Adler before reading him, though for some strange reason, this seems to always be omitted from the wider discussion of Jung online, removing him from his context and, instead, extracting out some of his more inflationary ideas in a highly irresponsible manner and discussing them in a highly inflationogenic way. By beginning with the Freudian stage, then, broadly, one can see that maladaptation to instinct, usually in childhood or adolescence, causes the shadow to detach from a positive relationship with the anima, causing it to act as an autonomous complex. Like all complexes, which we've discussed in detail in many videos on the channel, and which are explained in great detail in the PDF guide this diagram is taken from, the shadow then begins to accrue contents to it, such as ideas, images, and interests. This is what leads to the addiction, lack of meaning, and depression which marks the catabasis of the boyo. To get out of this, the boyo should and must engage with their own anabasis, their active engagement with uncovering their authentic personal myth, which necessitates an understanding that the anima is the relating function. 
The culture teaches young men to devalue themselves and passively encourages estrangement from others. This negatively influences their anima and, combined with the influences from the familial constellation on the anima, a problematic shadow will result. At birth, in the vast majority of cases, the anima is instinctively imprinted onto the mother, which forms the earliest traces of the young man's anima complex. Through the ego development of early childhood, the mother should confirm her son as different to her, and the father should confirm his son as a man in waiting, in two discrete but, in reality, usually overlapping instinctive stages. Disruption to either of these two processes, such as an overprotective mother or an absent father, will influence the shape of a young man's anima, and from this the shadow begins to become a problem, because the way he relates to himself and to others is maladaptive. By the time the young man begins to engage in the wider social world, an inferiority or superiority complex, resultant again from the style of maladaptive relating, can cause great upset and frustration. Over time, the ego and instinct grow further and further apart, and the shadow is further removed from a positive relationship to the anima. It might be a breakup, a seeming inability to engage with women in a flirtatious or romantic manner, lack of status, or the absence of a peer group. No matter what the influential so-called triggers are, eventually, the young man begins presenting with the symptoms characteristic of the boyo's own catabasis depression, loss of meaning, and porn addiction, as well as many others, of course. The negative anima and the shadow are fully autonomous by this point, and acting out, as it is so often described, of their own volition. The next step on the road downwards is regressive Oedipal pathology and a sense of inferiority, which causes the young man to develop a seemingly autonomous interest in what I began this video by describing as boyo. Any number from identity politics, internet gurus, pop psychology, Nietzsche, Jung, or more aptly, pseudo-Jung, nofap, fear of the collective shadow and the apparent evil inside of them, religious delusions, and inflation. This, then, is the shadow of the idea of the boyo as manifest. Individually, a personal crisis, perhaps from psychedelic use, though not necessarily, of course, or mental illness ensues, in the vast majority of cases as a signal from the unconscious that enough is enough and it is time to begin the true healing process, anabasis. Just as Jung's idea of the shadow is paradoxically the way into an immediate engagement with anabasis, if you wish to, following an understanding of this diagram, it is often the young man's interest in Jung which is the first rung on the ladder to climb out of his pit providing that he picks the right ladder and not one of the trickster's joke ones carved onto the wall. Archetypal fantasies, identification with myth, or hypnotism by imagos cast by a complex, and the like. For in Jung, upon closer inspection, it becomes self-evident and indeed said by the man himself that anyone reading the famed collected works should first read and understand Freud and Adler. The process of understanding both of them necessitates an application of their clinically derived models to one's own context. This stage is where Steve, Pauline and myself hope to guide you, by delivering the synthesized Freudian, Adlerian, Jungian model known as psychosystems analysis to you for the purposes of self-development. With Jungian psychodynamics as the core model of the psyche, that is, the anima animus, shadow, and persona, etc., the instincts that best characterise Freud, and the wider social relating function which best characterises Adler, one can uncover their own authentic personal myth, which in all cases of maladaptation is the par excellence approach to clearing away complexes and the harmful influences that have been assimilated to one's anima. It is this ultimate conscious understanding through the personal myth process that the anima is the relating function which creates the shadow, which is the solution. Individuation, therefore, comes from an authentically lived life, where the shadow is not a problem leading to maladaptation, but where instead 
It is a normal, homeostatically functioning psychodynamic cast by a positive engagement with the anima. Resultant from this process is the timed release of one's own genomic potential and a meaningful life. Thank you for watching my friends, I really really hope that you found this video useful. If you'd like to show your support of the channel and to Stephen Pauline's continued psychodynamic work, then perhaps consider picking up a copy of Discover Your Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook, from which the Tracing the Shadow diagram was taken. In addition to 458 A4 pages of jam-packed distilled depth psychology for self-development purposes. The guys in our Discord server, which you can join through the Patreon link below, engage with the guide every single day and often share their own updates, insights and journeys. Perhaps consider hopping in there and saying hi to the team, we'd really love to meet you. Cheers everyone and take care.